We're going live. We're going live. <laughs> We're going live. It's our own little talk show. Yes. Camera action. Right. All right, we are having coffee with the coaches. Are you letting people in yet? Yep. Good morning, Linda, how are you? She's connecting. Okay. Hi, Linda. Hey, Linda, how are you? I'm good, how are you, Grandma? Good. I'm gonna make you guys co-hosts, so in case I can't get to all the people in the waiting room, you'll see like a little thing come up. Okay. okay. So we're live on Facebook. So I'm just going to get started. And uh, Linda's with us on Zoom, which is cool. And uh, we are excited to sit and chat with you this morning and have coffee together. Yes. So um, I'm going to start out by asking you guys to introduce yourself. So um, oh, we lost Anne Margaret. She'll be back. So Rita, I'm going to start with you. Sure. So I'm Rita Gildersleeve. I'm the productivity coach at Keller Williams Realty Hudson Valley North, which is our Kingston office. And we work um, with agents in Kingston, Dutchess, Green Counties. Um, and I've been in the coaching role I'm in my third year as the productivity coach. I've been doing it for about two and a half years now. And I'm also a, a real estate agent in the office. So my husband and I work together and we sell real estate all throughout Ulster and uh, Dutchess counties. Awesome. And Meralda, tell us a little about yourself. Hello, my name is Meralda Murley. I am with Keller Williams Hudson Valley Realty in New City, New York. I am the productivity coach for, I just started this year. Um, I have been a licensed real estate salesperson for the last 20, going on 20 years. Does that surprise you? <laughs> yes, I can't even believe I'm saying that. Yeah. A long time. I'm sure, I know, it, it goes quickly. And uh, my name is Anna Gibbs. I am the general manager for the Hudson Valley Group. So I have the pleasure of working with these ladies and all the agents at Hudson Valley Realty in Rockland County, Hudson Valley North, serving Orange and Sullivan counties, and our newest uh, market center, Hudson Valley. Did I say that wrong? Hudson Valley United, servicing uh, Orange and Sullivan counties, and our newest market center, Hudson Valley North, which is um, servicing Ulster, uh, Columbia and Greene counties, as well as Dutchess County. And so we have a really emerging team up there. And we're all coaches. Uh, I came into Keller Williams with a coaching background and uh, we are excited to share with you some insights about productivity and time management, maybe coaching in general. And uh, we just thought it might be fun to come on here and, you know, just chat and have coffee together. So we hope that you've grabbed a cup yourself. Yay. Coffee <laughs> with the coaches. It could, we never know. It could be a whole new concept for us in terms of a TV show, right? Hey, I like that I idea. <laughs> so, um, Rita, you've been coaching now for how long? Uh, two and a half years about. And Miranda, you said it's been a year now, right? It's going on a year. It's going on a year. Mm -hmm. So what has, um, I'm going to start with a, a, a general question uh, that we didn't talk about beforehand, so don't be surprised. Um, we're just curious, you know, what has, be, what has um, being a coach taught you about yourself, about working with other people, just, you know, some insight around you and your development as a coach? Uh, you know, I work with uh, uh, mostly newly licensed agents and agents that are working on growing businesses for themselves. And I think one of the things that I've really learned is that everybody comes into this business with a different background and a different set of skills. And one of the things that I've really seen is that there's really no right or wrong way to sell real estate. Um, and that many different personality types can succeed through our business. There are certain 
you know, baseline things that you have to have, like a business plan and a good mindset and some of the stuff we'll talk about today, but really that you can customize this business and there's all sorts of people that can be successful selling real estate. Cool. How about you, Meralda? What, did you, what have you taken away from this experience so far? Well, much um, like what Rita said, but also I found that I absolutely love um, working with the brand new agents. I find a lot of joy in seeing them succeed. Um, also, I realized that um, they're really, it, it really is tailored. Coaching is tailored to the individual. So it's not the same across the board. So um, that's really basically what I found out, that the coaching really isn't going to be the same, is um, unique for every individual. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. You know, when you think about um, productivity coaching in the Keller Williams platform, some of it is very based on the systems and models. So mm -hmm. it, it's outlined and structured, yet we know we have to be very adaptable to whoever we're working with because everyone is different. Everyone has different um, behavior profiles. They have different goals. They have different ways of doing things. So yeah, I love that. Welcome, mm -hmm. Ann-Margaret. Uh, Ann Margaret is the productivity coach in our Hudson Valley United office. Ann Margaret, can you just take us a minute and uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit about your background? Um, sure. Um, well, you know, I'm Ann Margaret Bolton and I'm uh, with the Middletown office. Um, I started my real, real estate career in 1995 or 94, I think, um, after buying my first home at 23. Realized I was I was in the process of searching for a job. I had um, graduated college in '93 and was working in Manhattan doing advertising and marketing. Um, and the job that I was in was Major League Baseball, and they had the strike back then. If anyone's old enough to remember, <laughs> um, so I lost my job. And in the meantime, I bought a house. I had bought a house and was looking for something to do locally and look for another real job. Um, but 25 years later, here I am. So, and I really um, had a coaching experience about five years ago that uh, totally changed my life and inspired me to do that for others. That's awesome, what's that? All right, so ladies, let's talk a little bit about what um, we have experienced in terms of helping agents get into production. I know many of you work with some of the newest agents. That's not the only group of agents that you can work with. We'll talk about that too this morning. Um, but what are some ways that we can really uh, help agents get into production um, especially right now when we're thinking of, you know, being in a market that is changed, has changed very rapidly. Um, and interestingly enough, some of the newer agents, you know, are probably feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed, I would say, because uh, they haven't experienced different shifts before. So what are some things that you're doing uh, to help the agents stay focused on production and maybe even what that looks like? What do we mean by, you know, agent productivity? So I'm going to start with Meralda on that. Okay. Well, for me, I, I basically do work with brand new agents, and I think it's very important. There are you know, two basic best practices um, that I believe every agent should start with. And the very first one is definitely to set a yearly goal. Um, it's very important to see that in writing, and this should be done you know, every year. Because I truly believe you know, written goals have a tremendous effect on what we ultimately accomplish. So if it's something that we see, it will affect how we act. So I believe that you should have that, you know, keep a journal and have um, a yearly goal every single year. Um, the second most important thing to me is sticking to a schedule. So every agent must have a calendar, especially now, because we're all working from home, there are a lot of things going on. So you need to have that calendar. Like we always say, if it's not on our calendar, it doesn't exist. But that calendar cannot just be filled with business all day long, right? You need to set time aside for your family, for yourself, you know, for your health, for your sanity. 
So these are really two things that I believe that we all need to start with and focus on. Um, once you know what your goals are, you have something to keep you on track, right? Throughout the year, especially now, you need to stay on track and definitely sticking to that, to that schedule. You know, if you have to build that bunker and let so you can get your time and even your alone time, just build that bunker around it. So that's my take on the two main things that people should be focusing on, um, you know, for their best practices. Great, thank you. I love, I love that. So sticking to a schedule and having written, love yes. that. Um, and Margaret, so when we talk about helping agents get into productivity, tell us um, some things that you think are really crucial around agent productivity, what productivity really means, uh, and how you help them do that. Uh, sure, I'm not sure if I'm going to repeat going in and out. Um, but what I find really um, working well is to have them spend time developing their big why and what their big life looks like and why is that important to them and creating the activity and those goals closer and, you know, um, coach to them on the pain of not meeting those goals and not making those achievements. I love that. So tell us a little bit more about the big why. So it, it's really the motivation, right? It's, it's the underlying reason why they're doing what they're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes it's also about where they want to go, right? The big why can also be about, you know, the vision you want to create for your life. Why do you think that's so important in achieving your goals? <laughs> Well, I think, again, the big why is kind of what gets the motivation and the big life is what you're going to lead towards and getting clear on that and getting it out in writing and out in the forefront, you know, and sharing it with someone who's going to stand up for you to help you achieve those things, allow you to not justify your way out of not accomplishing those tasks. Mm, accountability. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, too. I love it. Great. Rita, what is your take on productivity? How do you help an agent get into production? So I think that I 100% I agree with everything Ralda and Ann Margaret said. And, and, I, and I think with the newly licensed agents, one of the first things we do is really sit and put together their business plan. Because we know that you can't get creative, right, in your business until you lay a strong foundation of systems and models that you can use to go off of. And it's the same systems and models that top producers use that newly licensed agents or agents that are looking to grow their business. Everybody has to do the same activities. So I think that it's really important um, in terms of getting into production quickly is making sure that you have a written business plan that has your goals outlined in them and has your big why integrated into it so that it, it's, a mo it's a motivating document. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, we also help coach agents. I think the other part of it is consistency. So it's making sure that once you have the business plan down that you're doing the right activities consistently. And that's really when the results show up. So we have some best practices at Keller Williams, like the daily 10-4 that we teach our agents to do. That is just- What is the good, daily 10-4? So the daily 10-4 is like the first thing really that I think is a good tip for an, an, an agent to focus on. And so it's four activities that you do daily um, in, ten, in increments of 10 essentially. So Oops, I just muted myself. So the first, the, so it's four activities you do in increments of 10 daily. So the first one is adding 10 new names to your database every day. So we know that your database can be a relatively inexpensive way to grow your business and a quick way to business um, as a new agent. So add 10 new names to your database every day. Talk to people that are already in your database every day. So make sure that you're following up with the people that you're already in conversation with. Um, writing 10 handwritten notes, uh, which I think it can lend itself pretty easily if you're having these conversations with the people and you're putting names into your database. A simple thank you note, just saying thanks for you know taking the time out to talk to me can be a really powerful extra touch to somebody. 
And then um, previewing 10 houses a week is the fourth 10. And so while right now we're working virtually, that doesn't mean that you're not still studying the market. And so we can certainly do 10 virtual tours, or I've been telling my agents to just take drives around the neighborhood that they're interested in selling and not get out of their car, but just drive around and look at the houses and get to know the different streets and um, there's no better way to be uh, helpful to your agents than to or to your clients than to understand the market and your value proposition to them. Yeah, and that would be true whether you've been in the business for, you know, 10 days or 10 years, it doesn't matter, right? So that's yeah. awesome. Yep. Great. So I know you all three of you, uh, and I spend time helping a, a lot of people that I coach on this too, it seems to be the thing that comes up a lot. Uh, and that's really managing time. And I've always said that it's not that we manage time. I think what we have to understand is we have to manage ourselves. We have to manage our own behavior around time and how we use our time. And I'm sure everyone on the call today has heard of the 80-20 principle, which is the Pareto principle. And basically what that tells us is that there's this predictable imbalance to life. Gary Keller writes about it in the One Thing book. And um, basically what it is, is that everything on your to-do list or everything that you think you have to get done in a day does not have the same priority. It doesn't have the same impact on moving you closer to your goals. That actually there's a much smaller uh, number of items, the 20% of the list, that would have the greatest impact, right? So we refer to that as our 20%. So in case no one has heard of this term before, uh, the 20% activities, they're short, they're, you know, short in terms of there's one or two usually, and they have the greatest impact. So I know that all three of you talk about uh, working on your 20% in your coaching. Um, so I have a two-part question. One would be, what is, the good, what is a 20% activity for an agent? And how do you help them stay focused on their 20%? So I'm going to start uh, with Rita on this one. So I think that there, there's a, the, e the easiest way to tell if something's a 20% activity is if it's making you money or moving your business forward, right? And so that's kind of the litmus test when you're thinking about what, acti what are those 20% activities. Um, an easy way that Gary Keller tells us that there's five jobs of a real estate agent, right? It's setting appointments, it's going on appointments, it's negotiating deals, um, and getting to the closing table, essentially. Those are the five kind of areas that make us productive. And while there's a lot of other things that we know come into our jobs every day as real estate agents, what we should be spending the most time on are those five basic um, pillars. So uh, I do think that part of success, uh, success in terms of time management can start with what you do your habits and that can be set as early as like your morning routine. I've seen a big powerful shift in my productivity when I really was able to nail my morning routine and get into um, the right mindset to start the day, um, which, which involves setting for myself no more than three priorities for the day. Because what I found is that if you're setting more than three priorities, the odds of getting them done goes down. And so the whole thing becomes motivating then. And is it really, um, and is it so really said, priority, right? If you have too many things, is it really a priority? A priority is, is a narrow focus. So having so many would, would probably be counterproductive, right? Right. And so all of those three things are things that are going to either make me money or move my business forward. They're all things that I have on my written business plan that I keep next to me while I'm working. So, um, so I think that just spending some time, I I also think it, time management, one of the keys can be um, your planning time. I think that it's really important to have planning time in the week and not just get up and start running around. You yeah. have to set aside time. I set aside most of Sunday and plan out my week ahead. Um, and that can be a very powerful tool because you do start to then realize what's important, what's not important. And, and for this week to be a success, what do what needs to occur, right? And once you know what it needs to occur on a weekly basis, then you just chunk it down to every day. What do I need to move do today so that this week is what you know a success the way that I intend it to be? Awesome. And Margaret, anything you want to add to that? Um, basically, just something that I found useful in the beginning. It was a hard. I mean, it's a hard. It's an easy concept to understand but a, a hard concept for me to put into practice. 
um, because I was so used to the to-do list. So for me to get started, I just started with my to-do list and put everything on there, broke it down at 20%, and then whittled it down even further to mm -hmm. the two or three things that will either make me money or move me forward, like Rita said. And that's been going pretty well, staying focused on those things. That, that's a great way to help someone figure out what's in their 20%. I've used that a lot in coaching myself because I think sometimes we just have so much in our, in our um, head, right, about what we want to do. And so I've always referred to it as a mind dump. Just get it all out on paper yes. and look at it, right, and figure out, like sort it out like laundry. Decide what priority things need to get done in. And, and so let's talk about that for a minute because priority, remember, it's about moving you closer to your goals. So when someone feels that they want to get the quick things, the little things done first, that's not a 20% activity. That's probably an 80 The 20% activities tend to take a little more time and they tend to take a lot more energy, right? So Morales, I'm going to put you on the spot. What's a 20% activity for an agent? Okay. Well, the 20% activities, well, can I just, just jump like in a for a minute? Like a specific activity, I mean, I right? Back. I just got to go back, right? So we all know that, you know, 80% of results come from 20% of our actions. So right. what I like to do, I like them to do like a little exercise, okay? So first you need to find out um, what are, you need to identify, you need to identify your three highest level activities, right? The three highest that'll bring you production. So I tell them to make a list of all of your activities, all the daily activities that you do all day long. Make that full list. And once you have that list, now I want you to ask yourself one question. You can do only one thing on that list all day long. What would that one thing be? That is number one. And now ask yourself the same question two more times. And now you'll have your three highest leverage activities. And what are those activities usually? Well, definitely lead generation. Right. Number one is lead generation. I mean, is that so just for new agents? Oh, absolutely not. That is right. for everyone. I mean, yeah. one year, 30 years, same thing. Lead generation is number one, right. number one. And another step to that is follow-up. Your follow-up is the most important thing that you can do. I would agree with that. There's an old saying, the fortune's in the follow-up, right? Exactly. Yeah. I could quantify most of my business comes from follow-up, has always come from follow-up, right? Wouldn't mm -hmm. you agree? Most of your appointments said and contracts written are really coming from following up a lot of times. So I, I yes. love that. Yeah. All of the deals that I've put together and I've, you know, I'm still putting deals together now working remotely and pretty much, uh, I would say 80% of them are coming from pipeline, pipeline people, people that I've been mm -hmm. nurturing since last fall or the winter time who now are moving forward that we're going to buy or sell regardless, that they are just using me because I followed up with them consistently and stayed in front of them. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, that's another thing, right? We need a pipeline. We, yes. I know, you know, we, we, that's one of those habits that we as coaches are instilling in anyone that we work with is that you have to have a pipeline. You have to have a book of business that you can go back to, take notes and, and be able to, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, shop through your pipeline, right? Go back and nurture those relationships. And that's where the, the follow-up comes in and, and that's really working your business. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, um, for any of you who are joining us on the call, if you have some questions for the coaches, for any of us, just put it in the chat and we'll be able to, you know, put some time in there, uh, in, in here this morning to talk to you. We'd love to hear your questions. Um, so no doubt we're in some challenging times right now. Uh, and as I mentioned in the beginning of the call with the whole COVID-19 pandemic, real estate agents um, were forced to, you know, come to, you um, a slow down in a lot of ways and just change the way that they were doing business. No, by no means has business stopped, which is good. Uh, yet business looks different. And, um, you know, with what's happened in the world, I, it's safe to say that it's caused a lot of uncertainty. Um, it's caused some, some fear with people. Um, it's caused 
confusion to say the least, right? Because we all are trying to figure this out and navigate this um, in our businesses and our personal lives. A lot of um, agents and other business owners are finding themselves suddenly being teachers. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot, right? So I know that I've spent a lot of time working with people and talking about managing their feelings and emotions and maintaining a positive outlook. And I wanted to hear from you ladies, what maybe some conversations you've had um, or what some of your best practices or tips might be for someone who's listening on maintaining a positive mindset. So I'm gonna start with Anne Margaret this time. And uh, what are some thoughts that you have around maintaining a positive mindset that someone can implement? Um, so I'm kind of reminded like with um, one of the shift tactics, you know, running towards what motivates you most and avoiding running away from fear mm. and keeping in mind that everything we want is on the other side of fear. Mm -hmm and getting clear on trying to identify what those fears are and asking ourselves, well, how true is that really? And finding ways, you know, to work around that and kind of change our story around it to change our mindset. Very good, yeah. Because I think we create our own reality a lot of times, right? And it's interesting, I had this conversation, um, I hope he doesn't mind me saying, with my husband a few days ago, and we're just talking about, you know, the news and the stories coming out and the, you know, perspectives. And I was like, you know, it gets to a point where for me, I turn it off because I can create my own reality and I can create a different um, energy around myself. And it, by no means does that mean that I'm advocating putting your head in the sand. And I do stay informed, but I just feel like, you know what, to... To create my own reality just means to set my mindset on the things I can control. And then I can create the results that I want that way. If, if something's happening in the world that I can't control, I mean, you know, what can I really do? I, it's a waste of energy to put it there. So, you know, that's one of, of my perspectives or tips on this. Moralda, how about you? What is, um, you know, what are some of your tips or best practices mm -hmm. around maintaining a positive mindset? Well, it is, you know, some scary times right now, right? And um, we all have fear and fear is self-centered. So truthfully, I think the best way is to focus on others instead of yourself, right? Since fear is self-centered. So put yourself in that mindset. Um, another Coming thing from too- Coming contribution, helping other yes, people. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, um, you know, you have to center your mind on something else other than yourself and that'll help. The other thing that is very necessary is we really, really do need to tune out the negativity. So mm. Turn off that TV for a few hours a day. You know, don't watch the news. 90% of what's on that TV is so negative, right? So minimize your negative. Add that positive. You know, find ways. I mean, who you speak to, right? Read motivational books. What you watch, what you say, all of this will really put you in a different mindset. So surround yourself with positive and just tune out that negative, even if it's mm -hmm. just a couple of hours a day. And I believe that that truthfully will put you in the right mindset. It will help. It will. Yeah, I love that. I'm reminded of the bold law, what you focus on expands. What you put your energy to will grow. So if you put your energy to those positive things, like you just said, that's going to create a different outlook for you. Yes. Love that. Definitely. Rita, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I couldn't couldn't agree more with everything that everyone said. And I think that maybe one of the things that you can do too is develop affirmations that you can say daily. Okay. And um, those, you know, usually we recommend that those are things that you put in the future that are in the present tense, right? That might be a future goal. So instead of saying, uh, I, I, um, I'm going to sell $10 million worth of real estate this year, your affirmation would be, I, I sold $10 million worth of real estate this year, right? Or it might be, I exercise every day. I think that exercise can be something that can be really powerful right now in terms of shifting your mindset and having a high energy um, level. And then uh, the other thing that, that, that I've been working on is keeping a gratitude journal. So trying okay. to really 
think about what I am grateful for right now and, um, and, and making it as granular as possible. So not the big things like my family's healthy and my, you know, I'm home with my husband and I like that. Those are all great things, you know, that I'm grateful for, but I try to look on a day by day basis, things, something as simple as we bought new coffee and I really liked it. And it was really nice to have a warm cup of coffee this yeah. morning. It just rained for a month straight and the sun's back and it's like so nice now that that's back. Those little things can kind of help you on a day by day basis, feel the gratitude in the like small activities that you're doing, which I think can help with your energy levels. A hundred percent. I love that. Gratitude is the highest vibration we can feel energetically and it really does change your world. I see Barry's making some great notes in here about um, how to shift our, our mindset and expressing gratitude. Um, so have you had, have, have the three of you gotten into some conversations with agents around mindset? Is that something you work on a lot? Yeah. Yes. It's like, it really is 90% of our success. And certainly right now with um, the, the market situation and what's going on, you know, in the world, it may be a conversation that, opens it up to different elements, but it's always a part of what we do as coaches, right? The mindset is huge because that can do, um, that's everything about your business. I mean, we see it in Keller Williams. There are nearly 200,000 associates in this company. They all have access to the same tools. They can read the same books. They have access to all the business models. No one is, is given any kind of elite status or treatment. Everyone has full access to the same exact models and systems, but why is it that some will achieve success on a very high level when others don't? I think it's always two things, mindset and habits. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right mindset and you're not consistent with the right habits around productivity, that's where you're gonna fall into perhaps a gap. Mm -hmm. um, I see maybe, this quote. I yeah. saved this quote in it um, the other day that I saw it, and it was, um, a pessimist is one who makes difficulties of his opportunities, and an optimist is one who makes opportunities of his difficulties. Yeah. Mm. Love it. I love it. Very good. So, and so true. Um, yeah. The third thing that I would say is uh, the difference in achieving success at a high level or not is accountability. So I think it's mindset daily habits, and accountability. So let's talk a little bit about accountability. Um, some people really misunderstand it, and some people, real. and I've been there myself in my career where I've pushed back from it. Um, so let's just have a conversation, honest conversation around accountability. What is it? What is it not? How does it help? Um, so Rita, I'm gonna have you start. What What is accountability? So I, I think, being an accountable person just means that you're really committed to your goals and you're allowing other people to help you with that and you're taking the guidance from others and, and executing on it, right? right? And you're allowing the people that, that you're either coaching with or working with to hold you accountable to your goals. And I, I, I do always think that the first step to accountability is to make sure that you have the right goals set. Because if you don't have the right goal set, you're not going to be accountable to them because they're not going to be very motivating to you. It right. might not be important to you to hit a certain goal and then you might lack accountability or shy away from it. So um, I do think that it can be a very powerful tool when you've connected the right big why and then you've set your goal towards it. It, it leans into most people then want to be held accountable um, to hitting that when their the purpose behind it is big enough. Yeah, for sure. What isn't accountability? Um, it's, I think sometimes, so in the productivity coaching program, I ask the agents every week for their numbers. And there's like four very basic numbers that we always track when you're looking at the health of your real estate business. And that's how many appointments have you gone on? How many of those appointments resulted in signed agreements? How many clients that you're working with have written, gotten accepted offers? And how many closings have you had? And so there's some agents that struggle with responding um, those, those numbers to me. And I think part of, part of what I try to get across from them is 
I'm not the teacher in a classroom asking you to just do a task right like and just check it off the box and it's somebody telling you what to do or trying to hold something over you we're just trying to get an actual picture of where your business is now so that we can make any needed adjustments to act to get you towards your goals if your goals are important to you and so i think sometimes accountability can be misconstrued as a like almost punishment or yeah, like it's not punitive like managed and that's really not it's really not it yeah. Accountability is it really, it's necessary in order to hit your goals and to achieve success at a high level. Um, because here's the thing, people, we will, let our, we will let ourselves off the hook every chance we get. We will make excuses, rationalizations, conditions, and reasons why things aren't working or on track. We'll be easy on ourselves or maybe even too hard on ourselves, right? Which is not healthy either, right? We can beat ourselves up and and actually, you know, have negative self-talk. So having the right accountability partner and a coach is the perfect accountability partner, uh, we care about your goals. And I think what Rita said is huge, right? It has to be your goal. And we're just here to help you meet the goal. So Moralda, how do you help agents um, with accountability? What does that look like in, in working with you? Well, first of all, you know, they have to take responsibility for their actions, right? So, um, they have to really be committed. This is something that they have to, again, with mindset, you have to have the right mindset and commit to something. Right. Um, accountability um, helps the agent um, distract from unproductive you know, behavior, unproductive actions. So that's why, you know, if they're not um, joining in on any group sessions, if they're not um, scheduling their one-on-ones, um, if they're not um, tracking their numbers and yeah. reporting them to me, obviously they're, they're not, not engaged, right? They're not engaged. They're not accountable. Um, so, you know, I really feel that, you know, it's very important. Um, accountability is very important because it teaches them to value their work. To me, that's what accountability is. It, it really teaches them to value their work. Um, and I think the most important result out of accountability is trust. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they need to trust us. Yeah. So that's the most, that is the most important result that comes yeah, from Yeah, that's a really trust. important point you made because uh, accountability can feel rough and yes. it can feel punitive if there isn't trust between the coach and that person. So, uh, yes. you know, that's one of the first things as coaches that we work to do is build rapport that leads to trust. And mm -hmm. um, I love that you said that. So accountability, just to recap, it's healthy. It's, it's really vital to your success. It is about trust and it is about you being able to set goals, articulate your goals and want to be held accountable to the actions that get you there. Mm -hmm. um, so, Anne Margaret, I'm sure you would agree with that and how important accountability is. Um, what's your take on it? I know the reason why you became a coach is because you've had great coaching experiences. So I, um, I'm going to imagine that you are accustomed to accountability. Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, what you said about it's our, it's our natural tendency to justify, to rationalize, to find other things to do than doing what leads us directly, you know, to our goals. Um, I think, you know, in, in coaching, like a recent example, um, you know, is trying to hold people to those goals as important you know, and to remind them of that big why and why it's important to them. Um, and getting really clear on that helps with the accountability part. You know, for instance, if you decided that this year you wanted to take your family and your parents to Italy, to your dad's hometown, that's pretty powerful. You'd feel pretty good if you were able to do that. Um, and then going back to our tendency to justify it would be to remind our, you know, ourself on, you know, what that goal was and what was more important that we didn't do the activities that would lead us to that goal than doing the activities that would get us there. Yeah, I love that. That's the payoff of accountability. You get what you want faster, mm -hmm. you know, than you would trying to do it on your own, honestly. So great stuff. Um, so let's talk a little bit about goal setting in general, um, what we're holding or helping people be accountable to. 
what, um, Meralda, in your opinion, what are some of the um, elements of goal setting? What has to be involved in that? Okay, well, to in the me, real um, estate world especially. Okay, well, success comes down to three things, right? Goals is number one, strategies, and then your actions. Um, so the first step is you set your goals, right? Then you have to develop those strategies take and take massive action, but taking that action over and over and over again, right? So there are three effective ways to, um, for goal setting. Um, like I said earlier, written goals are extremely important, all right? If they're just in your head, you can forget them. If they're right in front of you, right, you're going to take action, right? You can see them every day. So I think the very first thing with the three steps is one, of course, get a journal, a yearly journal, whatever you want to write down your goals, but just have that per year. And step one would be to do a year in review, right? Like what I do, my year in review is I take the 12 months for that year and I just fill it in with the best of, the best of every single month. All right. And sometimes I might not have anything for that month or maybe I have a few for one month. And it could be anything, anything, your best vacations. Um, you know, you, you reached a milestone, an achievement, anything that happened during that month. Um, the second step would be more or less um, learn and growing. Right. So what I mean by that would be um, write down everything that you did not achieve. Not necessarily failures, um, I wouldn't call it that, but things that you wanted to complete and you didn't. Okay, those are the things for step two, learn and grow. And then ask yourself, after you do that exercise, you know, what can you learn from this? How can you grow from this? And how can you move forward? And then right. step three is just writing your goals for a new set of goals for the year, right? Uh -huh. So it's basically... If it's something that you want to happen in your life for this year, write it down. No, no limiting beliefs. Let that mind yeah. wander and write down every single thing that you really, really want. That's you know, cool. and do you then, help do you help the people that you coach work on their personal and professional goals? Yes, yes, I do. And I even told them we just had another goal setting uh, group session this week. Uh, I felt that our goals that we set in the beginning of the year pretty much changed because of the pandemic. And yeah. I felt we're, so, you know, we're almost six months into 2020, let's set a new set of goals. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah, we did Yeah, you have to reevaluate, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, some so, people may need to reevaluate the goal. Some people may have to reevaluate how to get to the original goal. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that we have to be honest with ourselves that this is a, a period of reevaluating. Yes. And if you have to yeah. adjust, you adjust to meet, mm -hmm. you know, what is going on because it is unprecedented. I love, I love what you said there. Thank you. Um, and, and it's best to categorize them as well. You know, definitely take your goals and put them in categories. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's also a much better way. And honestly, you know, pick a few of them. Mm -hmm. You can do everything. You may not be able to hit all of them, but pick a few and really pick what's most important to you. It's more, you know, what's going to be more impactful, more influential for, you for that year. Esther, Esther just put in the chat, Meralda does do this. We just went over this on Monday. It was great. That's awesome. Good, good. Rita, so talk to me a little bit about your take on goal setting and working with agents, um, how you approach that. So um, I think that it's important, and this is nothing, nothing new or business or real estate specific, but it's important that the goals you're setting are SMART goals, right, which is the acronym that we hear a lot. And I think that that's the first really litmus test to your goals to make sure that they're sound goals that are worth working on. So um, that SMART obviously is an acronym for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So that would be taking a goal like I want to be a top producer. That's not really a smart goal, right? Because that's pretty vague. It's not very specific. Right. There's no very measure general. to that. There's no measure to that. It's, it, it, I guess, could be attainable, but how would you even know if you attained it, right? Um, relevant. Well, and what does it mean to be a, a top producer, right? Right. Because the definition changes for everyone. 
Right. And, and so, and then you have, you know, relevancy and then timely, if you just want to be a top producer, when in the next hundred years, like when, when is it? So I think sometimes when you're looking at setting goals for yourself, you can start with that, with that goal in mind and then move it into something that follows that smart goal timeline. So it might change from I want to be a top producer to uh, I want to sell $10 million worth of real estate this year. Right. right. So that's specific it's measurable. It's $10 million. It's attainable. Certainly there's agents in our market that are doing that volume of business. It's sure. relevant. You're a real realtor. So you sell real estate and it's time bound. So within the year, you that's what you want to really accomplish. And so I think part of co the agents that I coach, that's part of what I help them with is taking the goals and the big visions that they have and breaking it down into smart goals that then we can take and translate into a written out business plan that then becomes a set of habits and daily activities that are really easy to follow and, and actionable. Yeah. Awesome. Breaking it right down to what you have to do today. Right. Right. Yep. And Margaret, what would you add to that? Um, well, definitely the smart goals, as Rita said, um, are really important and narrowing them down to that one big goal and I like to help our agents use our internal 135 or GPS. You know, what Talk to us a little goal. bit about what that is. Okay. So it's taking our one goal and choosing and, um, or brainstorming three strategies that are, that are going to help get us to that goal um, with five specific um, tactics to put into action. Right. Fabulous. Good. So are you ladies using the 411 tool as well? That comes yes. next with after okay. the 135. Okay. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, well, it's breaking it down a little bit further. Um, again, putting that one goal is your one. Then your next one is your monthly and the four is your weekly. Right. So, so your big goal for the year a subset of that, what you want to do this month, and then how you're going to get there each week to get to the monthly goal, which helps you get to the yearly goal. Right. Awesome. And, and I, I know, I know, because I work with you all, that you also are really helping the agents get specific with the numbers they have to hit, right? We're in sales-driven business, and numbers are the language of business. So a big part of the goal setting is also about the income they want to hit or the sales volume, you know, um, and everyone looks at that differently. I'm curious, how many of the agents you coach, do they set the goal based on income or volume they want to hit? Usually income. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, usually income. So, and then you help them figure out exactly how to get there, like you've all said about chunking it down and what are the activities. And basically the activities are the lead generation activities that produce leads, that produce appointments. Appointments are what drives our income and those appointments you know, I always say if um, an agent is not really happy with the income they're making, they're just not going on enough appointments, right? So, of course, a big part of our conversations around numbers. And um, the other thing, uh, as we wrap up this conversation and maybe take a question or two, um, and you, got, you ladies, I, you have to let me know if you want to do this again. Maybe we have this be a series, you know, uh, or, a little, or a little talk show. And all of you can let us know if you found that to be valuable today and if you'd like us to expand the topics. Um, I do want to just uh, talk briefly about what coaching is in general, what it's not, the difference between coaching, consulting, and training, um, and get you guys to weigh in on this too. So I've been a professional coach for 10 years. And like Ann Margaret touched on, you know, I was inspired um, to become a coach myself because I was always privy to having that kind of support and worked with coaches. And I think for me, I have a passion for helping other people and inspiring uh, people to achieve greater results than they would on their own. So that's one of the things that drives me as a coach. So coaching is a collaborative relationship. It's really uh, a partnership with the coach and the coachee. And uh, unlike a training session, um, when you go to a class, the trainer is presenting a curriculum, like if you've been to Ignite or other classes in the market center, you know, it's very detailed and they're delivering the material and they may add their own personality or some anecdotes, but basically they're following a training outline 
and they're teaching you and then it's up to you to take the information and implement it. A consultant is someone who comes in and uh, basically is assessing a situation, maybe asking about your goals, but they're giving you very specific detailed um, plans and strategies that they expect you to follow. Coaching is a little bit of all of that, but at the end of the day, what I want everyone to understand, and you guys can weigh in on this, we don't have a magic wand. We can't, so we can, we can lead the horse to water, right? We can't make you drink. I always say as a coach, I try to make you thirsty enough so that you want to drink, but it's really about you taking action. And I think that it's important to talk about this because I'm sure we've all had experiences where we've worked with someone who's a little frustrated, but they have to take action, right? They have to be responsible for doing the work. And we're here to provide you with the plan and the guidance. Uh, maybe sometimes we even act a little bit like a trainer at times, depending on what it is. Um, but really at the end of the day, it's about you taking action and we have the ability to hold you accountable to the goals. But the secret sauce is in what you do day in and day out and week in and week out. So um, I kind of set a stage there for you. What would you like to say about that, Meralda? Well, um, coaching, is for people who are motivated enough to improve or develop. Yes, they have to be motivated to want change. It's a focused way to explore options and opportunities um, to create solutions, right, for sustained change. Yeah. Um, it's not, you know, we're not telling you what to do, but what we got to do is you find out what the answer is to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tell you, you need to find the answer. So we don't really solve the problem for you. You do, and we help you get that. Um, we hold you accountable to keep you on track. That's really basically what coaching is all about. Um, yeah. And it's powerful, though. That's the thing. Yes. It's so powerful when you have someone, because we also see it from a different perspective, right? We're not in it. We're not emotionally attached to your business or your goals. We're not financially invested in your business or your goals. So I always say I'm out here looking at your business from here and I mm -hmm. can see the forest between the trees. I can see things that maybe you can't see. I can identify a blind spot that maybe you have. So it's a powerful exactly. relationship. Yet, yes. Like you said, it has to be for the motivated. I love that. Right. Love really that. a support to reach their goals. That's mm -hmm. what we are. So we yeah. are their support. We're there for them. Right. So help them and keep them on track and push them forward. Get them, in, you know, get into the production that they would like to be in. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Rita, what would you say about coaching, what it is, what it's not? Uh, I think that um, going back to something we touched on earlier, you do have to trust your coach. So you have to be able to get into, feel like you're in a relationship with somebody that cares about your business, that is knowledgeable enough to help you, and that you're willing to be honest with, really, about your business struggles. There, you know, it's it's not enough just to show up to a coaching, a one-on-one -on -one coaching or a group coaching every week and listen and maybe put some of the activities into place. You have to be really honest with yourself and honest with your coach through your coaching sessions. And I think that that's really where the magic starts to happen is the more and the more um, open you're able to be in, a, in, in allowing the coach to help you and being maybe vulnerable with them about things that you're struggling in with your own business, the, the quicker that we can really help you move through those problems and get into a solution or work your business to, to, to get you to the, the goals that you set for yourself. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Awesome. And Margaret, what would you add to that? Um, well, I really love what you all have said, um, you know, especially the getting them thirsty, you know, the building the trust and the holding the accountability, that it really becomes an intimate relationship um, and being respectful and mindful of that, as well as, you know, working with a client towards their goals. Um, and of course, keeping in mind that you know, we've been through what we're asking them to do. They're, they're not in it alone. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm muted. I love that. Talk about that for a minute. Well, I think it's, you know, knowing that you're going down a path that others have followed um, previously, 
and that you're, you're, you're not like on the new frontier, you're not doing this alone, you know, you are, you do have guidance, you do have assistance, and people who have your back and understand what you're going through. Patty Co, thank you. Patty Co, I just said what Rita uh, just said about being honest and trusting the coach is on point. Good. So do you, uh, any of you who are with us have questions or comments or ahas from today? Uh, today's session, we'd love to hear from you. We thank you for joining us. Feel free to come off mute or use the chat if you do. Don't all speak at once. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Dale. How Dale? are you? Good. Hi, Dale. Hi, Dale. So listen, so I, I, I work with um, a couple agents, right? And it's really funny because the challenge that I uh, that I've had with each one of them is you have to do a 411, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you do a 411, you understand your business and I can understand your business to make you successful. And to hold you accountable, so, right? Yeah, ex exactly, right? And then it also, you know, um, it helps because a lot of the single agents don't understand the uh, the concept, I think, of team, right? So, you know, there's, I, you know, I hear that, oh, well, there's this team doing that, and I'm, a, I'm not a team. And so it takes an education and says, yes, you have a team, right? You have me as a resource, you have so-and-so, you have this other yeah. person as a resource. That's a team. So you have to kind of like change your mindset of what team means to you mm -hmm. and for your business. Yeah. And, you know, that's always that's like the biggest stretch because I'm always like, Oh, Oh no, I need your 411 so I can tell you what I'm not going to do. Right. So if I <laughs> that, then you can go get that resource. So that's always an interesting thing. That's great. Um, yeah. Insight. And just finding them, you know, and that, and that helps with that. Yeah. Um, that's great insight. And your coach is part of your team, right? So Patty just put out there that she thinks she needs a coach. I think you do too, Patty. So we'll be talking about that for sure. Everyone needs a coach. I have a coach. Rita, do you have a coach? Oh, yeah. Yep, I sure do. <laughs> Maralza and Margaret, yes. do you have a coach? Yeah, I have more than one coach. And most high achievers, you'll find do too. Um, Gary Keller talks about this in the One Thing book, right? That there, and, and as a coach, I've used the Wheel of Life. That's the concept Gary Keller talks about in the One Thing. You have all these different parts of your life. You have your career. You have your um, relationships, you have your finances, your physical well-being, spiritual well-being, and, you know, it's powerful to create goals in each one of those areas, right? Not to just let life unfold around you, but be purposeful about what you want. And um, if you're going to create a goal, see that, here, here's where it all comes together. When you create a goal, the missing pieces are the accountability and the coaching, right? Because now you created a goal, but who's to say... Not that I don't have faith in all of you, but who's to say that you'll hit your goal? Or who's to say that you'll hit the goal, but how long will it take? How much pain will you go through, right? So as coaches, we can minimize the time it takes to help you get to your goal and the pain you might experience because we provide the accountability. So whether it's setting a goal for you know, weight loss, finances, business goals, travel, whatever it is, spirituality growth, all of those things require a goal, a coach, and the accountability process. That's really how you hit your, your, your mark. So um, anyone else have anything they wanna add? Well, I think this was a great conversation and um, I will share the recording. I had some technical difficulties and was not allowed to um, stream it live. I tried multiple times, but we will share the recording. And I don't know, what do you think ladies? Do you think we should do this again? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I think we should. So look for more sessions like this and uh, we'll expand the topics. And for those of you who joined us, if you have an idea of what you would like us to talk about or dig deeper on, please let us know. And uh, we will be happy to do that and have this little uh, coffee with the coaches. Our All right, podcast, ladies, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I love so. podcast. I think that's great. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm, I'm all about it. So thanks so much, ladies. Cheers. Enjoy your Cheers. coffee and the rest of your day. Cheers. And we'll Cheers. see you all soon.
All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh, welcome.